This is Brent from Wolf on Wall Street Trade with a market update for the week ending January 11th, 2019. I see this as the fourth best short selling opportunity we've had since September. So you have one, two, three, four on what is a massive oversold rally. Here's the NASDAQ 100. I think I have some trend lines up here. I can pull them up. There we go. So we have a downtrend. We have a big oversold rally. And why did we get out of shorts at the end of December taking profits? Because markets were getting oversold, falling out of downtrends. This is the energy sector XLE 60 minute chart. Here's a downtrend. Here it is falling out of the bottom of that downtrend in late December. The technology sector was another. Here's the downtrend fell out of the bottom of that downtrend, meaning the market was getting very oversold. And now we have an oversold uh, rally. So for everything that happened this past week over here with trade war negotiations, a bunch of Fed speakers, Powell coming out again, uh, it's kind of a dull week. But if you look at the S&P, it's just unchanged, just down fractionally. Volatility is just getting absolutely smoked, hammered. So here's VIX. VIX is down almost 7% Friday. Uh, NASDAQ's volatility down 4.5%. Russell 2000's volatility gauge down 6.5%. Oil volatility down 5% or just about 5%. Implied volatility trading at the sharpest, steepest discount to realize volatility in its history. So the market seems really complacent. I have a chart here of VIX. It's a 60 minute chart. So VIX is in red and green candlesticks and I have a breadth indicator, okay, in white. Now this breadth indicator does not factor in volatility at all. It just looks at the breadth of the market, how it's trading, and it tends to lead VIX. So what I'm showing you here is this chart backed up to December uh, 17th. Now the market at this point is selling off, but VIX is trading in this range of about 16 to about 26. So the market keeps selling off, but it won't go higher. It won't go higher. Now watch this white line relative to the high over here. And this is something I was pointing out at the time. So I'm just going to walk this forward slowly. And at this point, this indicator starts leading Okay, it's making a new high. It's a leading volatility higher. It's saying that conditions, breadth conditions in the market are more consistent with volatility rising and watch what happens. So VIX won't go above 26, no matter how much the market sells off. This indicator is leading higher and then boom, volatility explodes higher up to about 36. So volatility has been crushed since then. Here's volatility since then, a one way street down. And here's the indicator now. The last couple of days of this week, what's it doing? It's leading higher. So it's not, again, it's not constructed on volatility metrics. It's constructed on market breadth. And it's saying that market breadth is consistent with volatility increasing in the near term. Speaking of breadth, it has been fantastic. So this is the S&P 500 and the McClellan oscillator just spiking. So you'll hear a lot about breadth, but you have to consider where this market came from. This is the S&P and the percentage of uh, NYSE stocks above their 200 day moving average. So down here, about 9% were above their 200 day moving average. So breadth just collapsed and you could see that happen into September. That was one of the warnings. But if we look back historically, this late December print was the lowest going all the way back to the financial crisis or the height of the financial crisis in 2008 back here. So at this point in the market, it had already retraced an entire bull market had been retraced. Okay, the financial crisis, horrible. So that's how oversold we were just in December and we're nowhere near a financial crisis. So the market has had really a spectacular um, oversold rally if you take a closer look at it on a chart like the SPY 60 minute chart, look at what volume is doing. It's just going down. So you have the market selling off on increasing volume, selling off on increasing volume, rallying on declining volume. It's the same thing for uh, QQQ, IWM, the Dow, all of it. So you have a counter trend rally here and falling volume. That's not a great sign for the bulls. So I've been using some of this strength to start building up my short positions again, entered a couple this week. I'm not getting too aggressive about it. I haven't entered any shorts in the averages like uh, the S&P or the NASDAQ yet. I'm thinking about it. I'm looking towards doing that. 
Um, well, one of the things that I noticed early this week was uh, treasuries look like they were going to pull back. This is the exact chart of TLT, 60 minute as we entered into the new week. So last weekend I did a video and talked about bull flags, bear flags, and maybe we'll touch on those again. But what I saw early this week was TLT, right, which is the 20 plus year uh, treasury fund, which has been ripping higher and acting great. Here's a, a bull flag here. It put in this little bear flag. So it suggested that treasuries were going to pull back. Now, treasuries have been the safe haven as stocks sell off. People buy treasuries. They've been running to those, which is basically like going to cash with a little bit of interest. So what I figured was if TLT is going to pull back a little bit this week, which this little uh, bear flag suggested it would, then stocks were going to at least not sell off, rally or not sell off. So let's take a closer look at how this developed. This is a 15 minute chart. So we have this little flag forming and I'm gonna just walk it forward. And remember what I was talking about last week with bear flags, you wanna see uh, you know, at least two rally attempts and this one is weaker here, doesn't make it up to that top trend line and comes down. So this gave me a measured move target of 120. I was looking for TLT to pull back to 120. I converted that in terms of um, basis points for the 10 year yield and about what I expected the S&P to hit, which was a little bit over 2600. And we'll walk this forward a little bit more. Puts in another small flag right here and comes down. And Friday showed a little bit of strength. Now this was kind of interesting and something to watch going into next week. I use a lot of different things when I'm trading the market because things change, you know, so sometimes I'm using one indicator, sometimes I'm using another. It depends on what the market environment's doing. So this is the, uh, the S&P or the SPY. I have the 10 year yield here in white. And I'm just gonna show you what um, I, I call like multi-factor analysis. I pay attention to different things. So not only what the stock market's doing, but what the bond market's doing. So remember that treasury yields move in the opposite direction of treasury prices. And one of the things I was just really um, focused on in September and pounding the desk over, as you might uh, say, was what was going on with treasury yields. See, they're up here nearing a new cycle high. Okay, And this is actually what caused the market to sell off in February of 2018. Yields spiking to a new high and the market really not paying attention. So that's what happened in September. Watch what happens with uh, this chart as I walk it forward. Yields break out to a new cycle high. This was October 2nd. October 3rd, Powell came out, was more hawkish. Yields moved even higher. This is where I was pounding the table. I was like, look, the market's not even reacting. I said, buy volatility, buy out of the money puts. This market's going lower and yields continued to go up. The market barely reacted, and then this. Boom, that sell-off started. So the tell in that situation was what the bond market was doing. Now I'm gonna show you from a little different perspective. This is the 10-year yield candlesticks, just my thing, and I've got some trend lines. It's a 60-minute chart, so this is November back here, December, and into January. So remember that treasury yields move opposite of treasury prices. So when yields are moving up like this, bond prices or treasury prices are moving down or consolidating. And here's a trend line, it breaks trend, moves lower. Here's another consolidation, um, breaks trend, moves lower. Another consolidation, breaks trend, moves lower. And this is what I pay attention to a lot. So I'm gonna show you why I think it matters. And I'm going to overlay a line chart of the S&P 500. And here it is in white, the S&P 500. So you can see that treasury yields tend to move with um, the stocks or with S&P 500. So that means when the uh, S&P 500 is going up that people are rotating out of treasuries and into stocks. And when they get scared, they rotate out of stocks and back into treasuries. So I watch these yields like a hawk all the time. Every morning, that's the first thing I do. Okay, the S&P is up uh, half a percent. I expect the 10-year yield to be up one basis point and if it's not i pay attention to that so as you can see yields turned down they broke trend the s p turned down broke trend this is early into early december when the market's just fascinated by uh president trump and president g at the g20 meeting and hoping that they're going to bond over meatloaf and the meeting was extended their dinner was extended i guess the meatloaf was good 
from 45 minutes to four hours and the market thought, that's great, we've got to buy stocks because they're having a great dinner and there's going to be a resolution to the trade war. So stocks are doing this, treasury yields are doing this. At this point, you know, I'm not going to say the, the correlation is always the same because in September, yields were spiking higher because the market or, or the bond market saw the Fed being more aggressive with rate hikes. Um, in this case, you see yields falling and that's because they're discounting lower growth. And if you go back to the video I did in early December, it's on YouTube. What I said was this was an earthquake in fixed income and that all risk assets, meaning stocks, were going to price lower. And that's exactly what's happened since then. So this was an earthquake, a huge divergence. Stocks are looking one way over, uh, you know, meatloaf and a four hour dinner. And the bond market is looking the other way. And it's saying we see major problems with growth and inflation forecasts that, um, have not been reflected yet and now we see it with Apple's earnings or their pre-announcement um, Samsung LG Macy's had a horrible uh, print this week this was a good sell signal for stocks and into the end of the year some funky stuff happened which I believe was um, well stocks number one selling off sharply because the like, hedge funds and the like uh, had to meet redemptions and they were selling and then towards the end of the quarter and towards the end of the year, you get pension fund rebalancing. So they've had stocks go down a lot and bonds go up a lot. So to rebalance, they have to do the opposite, sell bonds by stocks. Actually, this big old break here in the 10-year yield was right before Apple came out with that uh, horrendous pre-warning. What was interesting this past week, specifically Friday, let me zoom this chart in. I've gone to a 15-minute chart. So here is the S&P from um, January 3rd in the white line bouncing. Yields are bouncing with it. Now we had a pretty much unchanged day on Friday. S&P is flat. Volatility is down almost 7%. And the 10-year yield is down three basis points. Dropping three basis points, that's about what I would expect to see if the S&P was down 1.5% on the day, not flat. So you got a lot of uh, cross currents going on right now, and I think a lot of extreme complacency, but this is what I'm watching going into next week. Remember I said, I think TLT is going to pull back. It has been pulling back. That's more closely aligned with the 30-year yield. And here's the 30-year yield. It hasn't broken trend yet, so it's still chugging in there with the S&P 500. In the meantime, the S&P is just consolidating in this little ascending triangle, which is actually a bullish uh, price pattern. So what you see, you know, intraday is the market sells off a little bit. Here comes the buy the dip crowd, buy the dip, buy the dip, getting a little bit weaker and it's sitting right under this 2600 level. So this could certainly break out and could certainly move higher. And that's fine if it does, because the higher the better as far as I'm concerned, if I'm trying to sell short, right? But I'm not just doing it blindly because the market's up. I need the market up to be able to sell short and to have a good entry and lower risk but there have to be uh, some triggers that tell me why I'm getting in. Already opened a couple shorts this week, not in the major averages yet as we go into earnings season, but I do like the shorts that we entered this week because they hit the price targets I was looking for. They gave us the entry um, and some other reasons that you all know about if you're members. But one thing to really watch is what the bond market is telling you. On Friday, the stock market wasn't telling you anything. Volatility was being crushed. So I think that's complacency. But the treasury market, the bond market, was saying, hold on a minute. Since, since I mentioned bear flags and bull flags, let me just touch on a couple of formations last week so we can see what happened. Let's go to USO. And if you are in doubt, you can see the symbol up here, the time frame up here. I'm going to back this up a little bit. So here's crude oil, USO, and it is in a counter trend rally. So here's the trend down. It has bounced. It looked like it might have a little uh, bear flag going on. And I talked about these last week. What I like to see is weakness in the flag over here on this last kind of uh, rally attempt. And that is not what happened in USO last week. I'm going to back the chart up. We'll walk it forward. This is a 15 minute chart of USO coming into this past week. So a little flag action. That's a consolidation. Okay, and we'll walk forward here. And notice it stays kind of high up in the flag and then it breaks out above the flag. Now, that doesn't mean that crude oil won't come down. 
Uh, it just means that this was not a great bear flag setup and we didn't take it. Remember, you want to see that weakness over here. And part of the reason that uh, crude and, well, natural gas might have to do with a snowstorm, but uh, part of the reason crude is up is the fact that the dollar is down. There's a daily chart of the US dollar, or UUP. So since Powell went dovish, the dollar has been weak and that helps dollar denominated assets like crude. But again, crude oil is in a counter trend rally or counter trend bounce and that's what the entire market is doing right now so to wrap this up the market is in a counter trend rally here's the trend here's the rally they are some of the strongest that you will see in bear markets matter of fact i'll even prove it to you here's all the instances the s p has had a daily move of five percent or more at these little arrows where do you see them in bear markets so that is how a counter trend rally acts. I am not going to tell you the market looks horrible here because it doesn't look horrible. It shouldn't look horrible. It's in a counter trend rally and it is presenting an opportunity. Now I will say volatility is extremely complacent and that is going to make the market complacent and that is where you find opportunities in the market. I think this is probably the third or fourth best short selling opportunity but you have to know when and why you're getting in. So we started some positions this week. I will probably add some more shortly. Until then, I will catch you next week. Have a great week.